Hello, welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. It's time for an update on my tilting recumbent velomobile trike project. So since the last time I've made a bit of progress, so I now have a rolling chassis, so I've added the rear wheel, and we've got the crank mechanism installed at the front. So this time I'm going to give you a little bit of a close look as to how I got to the rear wheel and the crank mechanism, so I'll show you some clips of the machining processes. But before we do that, let's have a little bit of a closer look at the crank and the wheel. So let's see how the bottom bracket mount has turned out. This is a British standard bottom bracket shell which has the left hand thread on the right and the normal thread on the left. Uh, the crank set I've borrowed from my Trek bike, so the big chain ring is a 52 teeth ring uh, and that's the one I need for this project but the other ones are there to be used as well. Um, I'll probably end up getting a new crank set in the fullness of time. Um, but the bottom bracket shell is mounted to the frame via this 2mm steel fabrication and we've got various uh, bolt hole positions in the top of the frame so that I can move it forwards and back to give a bit of adjustment. At the moment it's fitted with SPD pedals. Uh, this is in the forward most position so there's a narrow gap between the pedal and the front swinging arm but there is sufficient clearance. I could have even moved it forwards by an inch or so. So this is all spinning nice and freely at the moment. So this is how the rear wheel has been mounted. Um, this is the Nexus Inter8 hub that I showed you in an earlier video. Uh, effectively I've got two aluminium plates, one here, one on the other side which are slotted at the end and the wheel just bolts into that. Uh, this is the coaster brake lever. So this is mounted to a plywood uh, spigot. Um, rough carved at the moment, I've got a little bit of work to do to sand this to the final shape. But this is attached to the frame securely and prevents the wheel from, or rather the brake lever from rotating as the rear pedal brake is applied. On the right hand side we've got a 19 tooth sprocket. So I chose this size sprocket to match the 52 tooth chain ring at the front. So, so this combination of front and rear sprockets and chain rings gives a spread of drive ratios approximately equivalent to my road bike in terms of the lowest and the highest ratio. So just to give you another look at the tilting and steering mechanism, because this is what most people come to this video to see. So this is how the tilt works, tilting to the left, tilting to the right, and the steering works like so. I've done another video showing that in more detail. So this is approximately the riding position that I'll be in when it's all finished. It's putting quite a bit of strain on my stomach muscles at the moment, um, so I can't keep this position for too long without a seat. Um, anyway, so let's dive in and have a closer look at making some of the parts. The first job is to mark out the shape of the dropouts onto a piece of thick aluminium bar using marking blue and scribers. Here I'm cutting off one of the dropouts and sawing and filing it to shape. I'm now setting up the vise in the milling machine table, setting the vise jaws square using a dial test indicator, and a couple of parallels on which to mount the dropouts. Setting the table stops accurately on the mill table using the digital readout for guidance so that I can drill the positions of the bolt holes accurately in the dropouts. Drilling the bolt hole positions using a centre drill moving to the second position using the table stops. Setting up a slot drill in an auto-lock collet. What I'm doing now is milling an angled face onto the dropout so that the bolts that hold the wheel in place are parallel left and right. The reason I need to do this is because the seat stays and the chain stays are not quite parallel at the point where they hold the dropouts. Positioning the dropout against the end of the vice drawers so that the first and the second dropout are in exactly the same position. 
So in theory, the shape of the bit I'm machining should end up being the same, left to right. That's the second one done. I've now turned it over to mill the parallel surface on the other side. Most of the clips of machining in my videos are sped up a little bit by the way, so it doesn't happen quite this fast in real life unfortunately. Or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. So that's that job done. That piece of aluminium bar cost me four pounds by the looks of it. Obviously came out of a scrap bin somewhere. And now shaping the seat stays, chain stays, on the position where the dropouts will be secured. Just doing a test fit here. Left one fits, right one fits. I think the video is slightly out of sequence here because I haven't done that machining in that particular clip. Okay, so I'm assembling the bits for the Nexus Hub. The, the dust cap's already gone on. The next bit to go on is the sprocket. So this is a 19 tooth sprocket and that simply slots on like that. Then we've got the lock ring. This is a split lock ring. It pushes in there. That was the sprocket by the way, so 19 tooth black sprocket. Next bit to go on is the cassette joint set. So this is the bit that connects the gear change cable to the wheel. It consists of this part and this locking ring. So what we have to do is to rotate it so the red dots are aligned and then align those red dots with the two red dots on the hub. And it can either go that way around or that way around, but I need it to go that way around so it's properly aligned. Press that down, then get the locking thing, align the yellow dots, and then rotate it. Rotate, there we go. So that's all locked in place nice and neatly. Now that I've got the wheel assembled, I can test the fit into the dropouts. And by some miracle, it fits quite well first time. The next job is to fit a small wooden block to act as a retainer for the brake arm. I'm securing this block to the frame using Araldite epoxy resin and a bolt holds it in place. Just testing the wheels, the tyre's not seated very well on the wheel at that point. Now to look at the bottom bracket. This was made from a steel fabrication, so one of the steel plates is now mounted on the faceplate in the lathe and I'm starting the process of drilling out the large hole which will take the bottom bracket shell. I'm now boring the hole for the shell using a boring tool. Testing the fit on the bottom bracket shell and it fits. This is one of two side plates, it needs a bit of cutting to shape using the good old hacksaw in the vise. Bit of sawing, bit of filing, and that job's finished. So those are the two plates, I've just used the angle grinder to clear the paint and everything off them. This is the bottom bracket shell I've got, and this is going to be welded into the plates like this. Um, It's a British standard bottom bracket so there's a thread on either end and I just need to make sure I get it the right way round because one is a left hand thread and the other is a right hand thread. I made the bottom bit out of two separate sheets because I didn't have enough steel or not one big enough. Uh, the welding's looking really ropey, I don't know whether that's because of my poor welding skills or because of the dubious quality of the metal. So having got to this point my head is telling me to stop and get some decent steel of known provenance that will hopefully weld a bit better but my heart is telling me not to waste any more time and to crack on uh, and it'll probably be good enough. So for better or for worse that's what I'm going to do.
right, I've got the bottom bracket shell uh, in place, measured it so it's central. Um, the right-hand thread on a English bottom bracket is actually a left-hand thread, so an anti-clockwise to tighten thread. The thread on the left is a conventional right-hand thread, so I just needed to make sure that I got those the right way round, and I marked it up on top to check um, that I had positioned it correctly. So I've measured it, it's equally positioned left and right, now to tack weld it in place, uh, and then fully weld the shell in place. So I've completed my bottom bracket shell structure. This is now going to be bolted onto the top of the wooden frame like so, with the four bolt holes and the two screw holes. Uh, this top part of the frame is flat, so I'm going to be able to drill a few more holes so that I can adjust the position of the bottom bracket shell like this to give a little bit of leg length adjustment. I'm going to drill part way through the wooden frame, uh, then I'm going to remove the shell and clamp a piece of wood before I drill fully through to stop the wood breaking away. I'm now fitting the bottom brackets, I'm just going to lubricate the threads with a bit of bicycle grease. This is the bottom bracket I chose, square taper type 68mm. The right hand thread is in fact a left hand thread, as you can see. And the left hand piece is a normal right hand thread, if that's not too confusing. I can now fit the crank arm. This is one I've borrowed from my other bike, as I said earlier on in the video. And we have a free spinning crank. So that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Hopefully next time we'll have the drivetrain fully installed and the handlebars and steering mechanism finished, uh, and maybe even a seat. And from there it'll be just a case of final finishing off before the whole project's done. And if you found this interesting, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Leave any comments or questions down below and I'll do my best to reply. Thanks, bye.